Hi everybody and uh, thank you for joining me for this video where I'm going to show you how I created this painting of a teapot and some lemons. Uh, the video is approximately 40 minutes long um, and it will be followed by a second video. Um, in the first video I'm going to cover how I create the form of the teapot and the three dimensionality of it. Um, in the second video I go on to talk about the details and refining the painting. If you'd like to see both full videos, then you need to subscribe to my Patreon page um, and there is a link below. Otherwise, you just get this shorter version. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you find it useful and um, let's get painting. You can see here, I'm just wiping over the surface of the painting with some um, linseed oil. Um, the painting's been left for quite a while and it's dried and uh, the paint soaks into the surface and it becomes very matte um, and it makes it really difficult to actually judge the values and the colours accurately. Um, so I've, I'm painting the linseed oil on and you can probably see that the colours are becoming more vivid straight away and the values are clearer, particularly the dark areas. So it's useful if the painting's dry to do this. Um, don't ever do this when the painting's wet because what will happen is you'll just mix up the layers of paint with the oil that you're putting on and uh, end up with um, the work that you've already done being really ruined. I'm just wiping most of that excess oil off with that cloth um, but there'll still be a film on the surface and I'll still be able to see them values really clearly. This is the palette that I'm using. Um, I'm not going to use all of these paints in this painting, um, but I put them on there so that you can see the palette that I do tend to use. I'm mixing up some black there, and um, that's green gold. Um, I'm creating a color for the shadow area of the cloth at the back. Um, so there was some burnt umber in there. And you'll see in a second I hold a knife up and look at this, compare it with the still life at the background. It's very difficult for you to judge the actual colour from this shot of the palette. I don't think it gives a clear representation of the colour. Um, I actually started this painting before Christmas. And then um, at that time I decided to open the Patreon page. And I thought it, it would be more useful to have a full video um, of a painting from start to finish. And that's why I chose to do the lemon painting, which was a fairly simple subject. And it was it allowed me to sort of show the process that I go through. Um, so this painting was put on hold. Um, and now I've come back to um, complete it. And I had to set up the still life again. And of course, you can never replicate it exactly how it was. So the, the drapery, is uh, when I set it up the second time, was in a slightly different position to the original setup. So now I'm having to adjust some of the shadow areas. Um, so putting that dark value on it that I've just mixed up. And you can see, because that surface was oiled in earlier on, the paint flows really easily and it will allow me to blend in this darker color um, to create those shadow effects. The brush that I'm using here is um, a chisel edged um, Rosemary's three quarter inch brush. Um, I think it's a Rosemary Eclipse. Um, it's a soft brush, the bristles are very soft and that uh, prevents any of the paint from below being dragged up. Um, it also allows me to put a thin layer of paint on. I tend to only use the bristle hog hair brushes um, right at the start of the painting when I'm putting on the initial block in. Um, and once that's in, I then use softer hair brushes. Um, and the final layers are done with sort of a sable brush, really soft sable brush.
So I'm mixing a lighter green now for the highlight areas of the cloth at the back. And I'm putting in various colours in there. Obviously I've used the white initially to lighten the, the green that I've already got on there. And I used a little bit of lemon yellow which will also not only lighten the colour but increase the saturation slightly. So there's more cadmium yellow going in there. Um, and when I'm mixing colours... I'm, I initially start off by getting a rough approximate of the colour that I'm trying to mix and then I'll hold the knife up and compare it with the colour that I'm aiming to get and immediately I can see whether I've got to adjust firstly the value, do I adjust it make it lighter or darker but then I have to consider do I adjust the chroma, do, does it need to be uh, more saturated, um, maybe the colour might need to be slightly warmer um, or cooler and, and I can adjust that with my understanding of the, the effect that different pigments have. Now that understanding has only come about through lots and lots of practice and I think it's a really good exercise to try and mix up colours and match them with um, objects. So you might have a colour in a magazine or the skin of an orange or something like that and just go through the exercise of mixing up the colour and dabbing it onto the surface that you're trying to match to, you'll immediately see how close you are and then you can think about those two things. Do I need to adjust the value? Do I need to adjust the chroma? Um, the third thing is the hue and, and that is the actual colour. So you can have a green for example like I'm doing now, painting now, um, and there are various um, different greens that are available. So this is quite a muted green that I'm putting on. If I wanted to, if I added a load more yellow to that, it would become um, a higher chroma colour, but it would also actually change the colour and lean to more, more towards yellow. This is quite a bluey green that I'm painting on at the moment. Um, so it's all through trial and error, really. Um, it's very rare that you mix a colour, hold the knife up, and it's spot on straight away. Um, you need to keep on spending a lot of time adjusting the colours, holding the knife up and checking. Um, it's probably, I probably spend more time mixing the colours than I do actually putting the paint onto the surface. Because if the colour's wrong, it just stands out straight away. And it's definitely worth spending the time to get that colour accurate. Um, the, the green of the drapery at the back was relatively difficult to mix because of all the patterning on the cloth. There's lots of bits of red and white in that cloth. So I had to kind of isolate bits and, and get it as close as I could. Um, there'll be a similar problem when I come to do the um, teapot because of all the ornate sort of gold decoration on there. I have to ignore that to a degree. Um, I mean, in your, your first instinct is to think, well, the teapot's white, I'll paint it white. But of course we can't do that. The only area of white on the teapot is the um, reflected highlight. Everything else is slightly um, lower value than pure white, um, and particularly in the shadow areas. Um, the mistake a lot of people make is to try and try and paint a white object with white, and it just doesn't work. Those shadow areas are really dark, um, and I have to think about that when I'm mixing the colour. So what I'm trying to do when I'm painting um, this cloth is, as I said earlier, ignore the patterning on it. Um, if I can get the form of the cloth relatively accurate, then it, it seems far more effective once you paint the pattern on afterwards. And, and it's the same principle with the teapot. Um, and whenever I'm painting anything with an ornate decoration on it, such as the teapot or cloth, anything like that, get the form of the object first ignore all of the decoration and then 
when you add the decoration afterwards, um, the, the effect is much more convincing. If you try to do it the other way around, you're making life really difficult for yourself because let's imagine I was going to paint um, the teapot and I added all of that detail on and then I wanted to try and shade shade the darker areas and the lighter areas and adjust all of those. I'd be trying to work around all the detailed areas and it would just be impossible to do. Um, so if you can get a convincing structure to start with, then adding the detail, I mean, it, it is fairly intricate, but it's not anywhere near as difficult as you would imagine. And it creates um, a, a very realistic effect. Just making sure that that fold that comes around the back of the teapot is in line with the fold at the top where the drape starts. Um, and now I'm going to mix up some more of the shadow colour for the, the folds in the cloth at the back. Um, you'll notice I'm using lots of warm colours in there, so the browns and ochres um, to mix that green. Um, green can be a very difficult colour to manage in paintings. It, can, it has a tendency to kill a painting. Um, landscape artists will know this. When you're outside and everything's green, it, it's really difficult to handle. Um, and variations often the key. Um, lots of lots of variety in it. Um, what I wanted as I wanted a warm green because I felt it would go it would offset the gold and the lemon color um, well. And the other thing is the cloth has um, a lot of red in it, um, and I didn't want too much of a jarring effect with the red when I put that on later. So I mixed quite a warm green. Um, it has a richer um, feel to it. <music> I'm not too worried here if um, I drag some of the paint over the teapot, edge of the teapot. Um, in fact, um, I don't want to leave any gaps that I have to fill in later. So I'll go right up to the and over where the boundary of the cloth and the teapot is and then tidy that up afterwards by painting over with the, the colour that I use for the teapot itself. In fact, I'm just sort of making sure that there are no sort of gaps um, that I have to come back to. It's much more difficult later on to try and tidy those little tiny areas up where you may have left a gap between one boundary and another. Uh, firstly you've got to mix the right colour and then secondly you've got to a really fine area to fill. It's better if you can get that sorted at this stage. I mean I'm, there you go you've just seen I've painted over the edge of that lemon and it doesn't really matter because um, I can tidy that edge up when I come to do the lemon itself. I'm happy with the, the cloth at the moment, so I'm moving on to the colour for the teapot. And as I said before, I don't want to just use plain white. So I've mixed some Naples yellow in with that. Um, I, I don't want it to be a really cold white. I want it to be like a creamy white. Um, I want the whole colour, the whole painting to seem quite warm. Um, and that will be 
my local color for the teapot where the main color so it's slightly below the pure white um, as I say I'm going to save the pure white for the highlight at the very end now if you saw the lemons video it's the same principle with the teapot um, we've got that the form is created by a gradual transition from the light values to the darker values in the shadows and and I do that by painting on um, areas of um, color so I'm painting on the local color now and then I'll paint on a half tone color and then a shadow and then I'll blend them all together at the end to give a smooth transition but initially it's quite blocky the colors are there's a strong highlight on this spout as well that I've got to get in and as I said before now it's just giving me that chance to define that edge so there may be areas where the green paint spilled over the, the edge I'm just going to tidy that up a little bit probably notice how careful I'm being at the moment with this um, that heart that transition between the cloth in the background and the spout that edge has one of the sharp areas of the whole painting um, and I want to make sure I get that right and getting that curve very gradual I don't want to be any sort of lumps and bumps in it it's got to, to make it look convincing the porcelain of the teapot is very smooth so I have to make sure that that edge is very smooth and that's why I'm taking my time with it again I don't know if you, you saw in the previous video at that point I'll be using the stick to rest my hand against so that the brush doesn't shake got some of the local color there and now I'm going to mix the darker values so I've added some raw umber to it and um, raw umber is a fairly neutral color that will lower the value of the the cream that I mixed up without changing the the saturation the chroma of it This color that I'm mixing up now, I've taken some of the original um, cream color that I mixed for the teapot, for the lighter area of the teapot, and I mixed some raw umber into it just to lower the value, and that, that's going to be a half tone. Um, and then I'll probably mix varying degrees of that so that I can block that in and then graduate those transitions. So I've mixed a little bit of uh, the Naples yellow in with that again to create some more of that local colour. Again, there's a slight variation on that half tone. So I have a few different sort of puddles of colour that I can refer to now when I'm creating these transitions. And as I said before, there's a lot of time spent checking and holding the knife up to the still life to make sure I've got those colours accurate. Again, you saw me there compare it with the actual paint that I've already got on the teapot. Um, it's worth spending this time. It is very time consuming, but it definitely pays off.
this area of shadow that's cast across the spout is um, really important in defining the shape of the spout. Um, so I'm taking my time with this bit. You can see I've blocked in um, those other values and I'll continue to do that in a minute. Quite blocked in quite roughly um, and then I'll get um, a soft brush and blend them all together. Although I'm referring to the um, still life, I do stop every now and then and look up at the still life. A lot of this, um, constructing the form of this teapot, particularly the this body of the teapot, is um, based on my knowledge of uh, how light falls across a sphere. Um, it's difficult to actually pick out the different values because there's so much decoration on the teapot itself. But I do know that if I can get the form of the teapot, the underlying form correct, then it'll be convincing once I add the detail afterwards. Just increasing the chroma of that color that I've put on. Um, I think it was too, too low a chroma. You generally find that the, the highlight and the lightest area of the sphere, in this case the body of the teapot, the, the chroma, the intensity of the colour isn't as strong, believe it or not. The value is very high, um, but the chroma is lower. The highest area of chroma tends to be just before the half tone. So I'm just starting to define that edge a little bit more on the left hand side. In actual fact, I pushed it out too far there and I have to come back later on and correct that. Um, but again, it's important, similar to the spout actually, it has to be very, very clean line along that edge. So I'm using the um, stick again there just to support my hand um, while I'm doing these edges. Um, you, you can get more than one. If you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. You can cut back into it again using the um, colour of the background. But it's, it's the hassle of having to mix the colour accurately again. So if you can get these edges done correctly in the first attempt, it just saves you a lot of time later. Um, the left hand edge that I did a, a couple of minutes back uh, I have to go back in later on and correct that and I have to get the right color and it just it just adds to the time taken on the painting 
I'm just softening that them two um, values together now. And what I don't want is I don't want a sharp um, division between the dark value and the light value because that will suggest that there's a sharp edge on the spout and obviously the spout is a cylinder so the transition has to be really gradual and to blend them together I'm going to have to use quite a small blending brush so that bit that I'm doing I've just flicked on there that is um, the reflection of the spout on the body of the teapot that's why that value is slightly higher um, than the, the value just to the left of it and lower down this bit that I'm doing now, this is the reflection of the lemon, the sliced lemon. Um, so I'm just adjusting that colour slightly, it might be too high a value, so I've lowered it slightly. I don't want it to jump out, but I want it to make it obvious. So there we are, I've lowered the value of it a little bit, and, and that's going to be blended in as well, but it just suggests that reflection of the lemon. The handle of the teapot is partly in shadow, but obviously the value of it is slightly lighter than the um, cloth behind. So I'm using the half tone um, value that I mixed up earlier for the body of the teapot. And it's one of those moments where I need to steady my hand again. Um, if you were to paint this and have any wobbles or irregularities in it, it immediately destroys the illusion of reality. So the curve has to be absolutely spot on. Um, and I'm holding, I don't know if you notice, I'm holding the brush quite a long way back, um, not nowhere near the tip. The reason for that is, if you hold the paintbrush like a pencil and you try to create a straight line, um, have a go at this actually, your hand has to rotate through quite a big arc um, and there's more chance because of that movement that it will it'll wobble. If you hold a paintbrush further back you can rotate your wrist and the tip of the brush covers a, a bigger area so it's less likely to have bumps and lumps in it. I'm using a large uh, blending brush here. It's almost like a makeup brush um, and just gradually working the paint together. Um, the brush was, is bone dry. If you ever try and do this with a wet brush, you'll just ruin the painting. Um, and every now and then, um, obviously, obviously while I'm doing this, it's picking up paint. So every now and then I have to get a paper towel and wipe off any excess paint from the brush. Don't, uh, I don't wash it in turpentine or anything like that because even if you try to dry it, there will still be some on there and it'll just make marks in the paint. So after all that blending, some of the highlight value had been dragged into the half tone value. So I'm having to go back over that again now um, and add a, add a few of the darker values in there. Um, just to notice that I'm not being particularly fussy with the brush. I'm, I'm putting big broad brush strokes on still. Um, I don't want to get too fussy, fussy with it at the moment. I'll keep blending it um, and that's how you create that smooth transition.
So I'm just using a smaller set half inch sable brush there just to soften the edge on the spout. I really love this brush, it's so soft. If you can get sable brushes, they are the best. And they're expensive, but they're really, really good for this kind of job. see I've got a bit of paint um, that was polluting the brush there um, just have to drag over that blend it in again okay I've cleaned the palette off now because I'm moving on to a new area of the painting and as you can see I'm mixing up the color the local color for the lemons and I'm going to go through exactly the same process that I did in the previous video where I did the lemon study. So I've mixed up the local colour. I take some of that colour and um, darken it with the raw umber and that will be my shadow value. Again, um, the first impressions are that that's too dark. But as you saw in the previous video, um, the, the shadows are very dark particularly in this picture because it's very um, there's a very strong light from the left hand side and we want to create that sense of drama in the painting So you'll see a lot of pausing now and what, what appears to be me dithering. And again, it's just me. Um, I'll be looking at the still life and making sure that I'm putting the paint down in the right place. just using this as an opportunity to um, shape the top edge of that lemon. Um, and although the background was recently painted and is still wet, because I'm using a really soft brush, it's not mixing the paint up. Um, so I'm able to get a clean color on there. The paint's being laid over the top of it.
can see here I'm kind of struggling to get the right angle with the brush I'm turning it around and trying different ways um, using the stick to support my hand just so that I can get a really clean edge there This is exactly the same process that I went through with the teapot. So I'm blocking in the different values of color and then I'll blend them in again. So now I've got that really highly saturated local color um, that's going to go on. You may be able to see the bands that um, where I've blocked in the different values. So at the moment I'm just um, using this as an opportunity to redraw that edge of the sliced lemon. That's quite an important part of the painting. There's going to be quite a strong, sharp um, contrast there, just to suggest that bright light. Just cleaning the brush off there um, because I'm going to mix up um, some of the darker background colour just to define the top edge um, and some of the green for underneath that lemon. Although that paint's still wet and it's it's mixing up the two colours, um, at this point I'm more concerned with getting the drawing corrected. 
Um, I will then go over that once it's dry or a tacky, uh, but I've got to get the drawing right. That's the most important part. Okay, I'm just getting towards um, a stage where I'm starting to think now about adding detail to the painting. The form um, is strong, um, the form of the teapot and the lemons is strong anyway. The, the background does need a bit more work. Um, in the next video, I'll be showing how I move on to adding detail and we'll look at that um, decoration on the teapot and we'll finish the lemons and then of course um, do all the intricate decoration on the blanket. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.